Hang in there with me, everybody. 5.59, one minute. All right. So the last banana, I'll talk about this in here and give you a little bit of history on why the dinos have the last banana and the fact that I have to eat all the bananas at our house now because of our story about the last banana. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, I am wearing a special dino shirt tonight. Check that out. He's so cute. It's a dinosaur from E.T. Everybody loves E.T. And I'm gonna get started here now. It's 5.59, so welcome to Friday Night Dinos. This is the first inaugural broadcast and I'll have some prizes throughout the broadcast. I'm going to draw this scene in front of us. If you want to draw along, go to FridayNightDinos.com and you can download the image. So, a little bit about the, the last bananas. Well, I gave a few people to time to, to jump in. Uh, years ago, I was on this crazy diet and my son ate the last banana that I was looking forward to eating. I was really, really upset. I was so upset. I was mad at him for like two weeks, which was crazy. But I, it was a, it was a rough diet. So that probably had a lot to do with my crazy. Um, get my head out of the screen and start drawing. So if you're drawing along, the first thing I like to do is really figure out what I'm going to crop and where I'm going to have these. I know that I want the top of this dino and I'm just going to draw some lines and hopefully you can see everything is going to be over here. I know I want a banana in this scene and it's going to, if I look, that top of the banana is about right about the midpoint or a little lower. And then the other feet of the dinos, I want to make sure that their feet are in there. So if this guy has feet, they'll be here. And if I'm looking over here, I go, this guy's feet are a little shorter. So I kind of give myself a guideline so I can start fitting these pieces together. Now, I want my, I try to figure out what's going to be about center and how my composition is going to sit. I know that I don't want the end of my banana to sit right in the middle. Like that I don't want. So I'm gonna start in here and kind of give an idea of the size of this banana right in here. And I block stuff in, in general, kind of just rough it in quickly to get some sizes. I'm also looking where everything is sitting. So we'll get more into this as we draw. But I'm really looking at where the shapes are in space so that I can size everything right. Now, this was the top of this left dino. There's a little space from where I'm looking up here. And the image that you're seeing, I can't get the exact angle that I'm looking at with the camera because you won't be able to, um, I wouldn't see my scene if the camera were in front of it. So your angle is going to be a little bit different. But I'm looking at the negative spaces as well. So we're just gonna just draw rough in here where this dino head would be. And I put some little markers. And then I'm looking at the space in between. So where from the tip of this nose, and what does all this space look like? And where from this banana, if I come straight up here, I know that's the outside of his mouth. And then I really start looking and saying, okay, how does this how does this fit in here and how can i get this mouth in here now already i can tell that i haven't sized this this right because the top of my dino head is now going to come in here so we're going to have to do a little bit of adjusting i'm going to come back in here and use my eraser don't ever worry about using an eraser because you use it a lot and we're just going to wipe out a whole bunch of stuff 
And I'll usually leave marks on here and clean it up later. I'm gonna go in here and try to size this a little better this time. Top of banana, outside of this guy's head, outside of banana, that's gonna be where the jawline is. And we're just gonna make a great big shape so that we can size him a little better this time. I'm gonna put more blocks in. This little arm is gonna go back in here. I'm looking at this, this is where this banana is. I'm gonna make sure that his little arm has space in between. I'm gonna come up here with this, the stem of the banana now. Now at this point, I know that my banana is gonna go off the page. I'm okay with that because what's more important to me are the dinosaurs. I think they're way more interesting. I need just a little bit of the banana to tell the story. So, um, and I'll get my head out of the screen because I'm probably gonna keep doing that. So we're gonna come over here, kind of block in where he is in here. And then his neck is gonna come down here and his little arms. Now this one is gonna be a lot bigger on my page than the one I did before. And I can show you that. You can see that on FridayNightDinos.com too. You can also see a close up of it, of what I actually painted. It has more dinosaur than dinosaur head than the one I'm working on right now. So just something to think about as you're drawing, and feel free again to stop and erase. So I'm gonna come in here. Again, I'm gauging where is everything. How close is this dinosaur's head and how big is this piece of his snout? I'm gonna draw a triangle where that eye socket is so I can space things out. I'm not worried about making a mess in here. I, I know that I'm going to make a mess. His mouth has got to come down. So his jawline is going to come down in here. That's going to come in here. Here's his neck. There's another triangle. So we've got another triangle that goes about halfway down here and half in here. And then I go up and I do the top of this right here. So there's the back of his head. And I know there's a little line in there as well. So I'm gonna come down here, and if you guys have any questions, hi, Go West, fine art, how are you? I see you found the little dinosaur, awesome. He's so awesome, thanks for joining today. Okay, so we're gonna come in here, and now I'm gonna place his little, his, his ah, little dinosaur arms. So put these guys in here. I feel like I need to channel um, Bob Ross a little bit. Like, happy little arms. Let me give him some happy little arms. And this is the stem up here. I'm gonna come up here and work on just trying to block this dinosaur in a little more so you guys can see him. Our goal tonight, I'm gonna to try to get you guys through this so we have it drawn no later than seven o'clock. Um, I know that for some of you, you may be getting close to bedtime. And then I'm gonna have an after party. So from seven to eight, if you wanna hang out, we'll paint it. We're gonna do some painting tonight. And we'll just kinda of go through. I'm gonna to try to use Fun things that most people who don't make art regularly might have at home. So I've got a very um, low-cost, prang set of watercolors that you probably used when you were a kid in school, or you may just have them hanging out. Um, you could use markers. Some weeks we're going to use some markers. All right, so he's got this little divot in here. 
This comes back and there's a circle. There's a circle that goes right here. And his neck really comes back quite a bit in here. Let me move this camera just a little bit. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm finding that it, um, it drops. So don't look for a second. We'll work on that. Move that out a little bit. So there's a circle in here, and then he's got an oval shape right in here where his, his nose is, and the nostril lines up right there. So I'm just going to come in here, get a really good feel for where this is. Now, here's where this, his chest comes down here. I know that I won't see it over top of his arm, but I'm going to imagine where it ends and then draw this little piece in there. Again, I'm looking at where things are in all the spaces. What do the outside spaces look like? I can tell you right now, his neck is a little off and his jaw is a little off because this space right here should not have been as far as straight up as it was. It's a little more, um, this way. There's more of an angle like this. So I'm going to come back across here at the bottom of his mouth. I am drawing with a very dark pencil today so that you can see it. It will probably stain my paper quite a bit. And again, use, use what you have. Um, you could use a ballpoint pen. Just sit with a tablet and a ballpoint pen and draw. It's great for stress. Okay, so I'm looking for where these little horns are along the top of his, his spine. So I'm just coming in here like that and drawing that. And now I'm gonna come back in here on his little arm and kind of gauge where his back falls. So I know that it's gonna come up, curl around. I want him to look too unusual. I'm gonna switch pencils. And I jump around now, I kind of go, Okay, well, what, what do I find interesting? What would be fun to draw? Let's start filling this in. So we're still getting to know it, sneaking up on it, trying to, to get all of these pieces in here. But as I do that, I'll return back and say, what do I find interesting? What would be fun to draw? And that keeps me interested in the art. It keeps me interested in working on what I'm, I'm doing. I don't feel overwhelmed. I kind of bring it all up together so that you can see it all together. So we're gonna come down here, work on this guy. Now he's got a ridge line. He's got this shape in here and his nostril. I'm gonna make sure he's got enough room for that nostril. I always give him a very blunt, I've drawn this dinosaur a lot. I always end up giving him a really blunt little nose, but it's longer than I anticipate every time. Now in between, he's got a triangle shape. So there's a triangle up here, and then down here in this eye, and there's a ridge line. So we're just going to indicate where that ridge line is and where his little eyeball is so you can see that. Now that's going to come around like that. Back here, I believe this is where their ear is. So um, probably a lot like my chickens. Little space back there where the ear is. Big jaws come in here. And then he's got this fabulous little pink, fleshy jaw part that opens up that I love painting. I don't know why. 
just one of those weirdo things that that I like. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit because I have so much pencil on here. And I'm gonna make sure it's long enough. Is it coming out long enough? And then I add, start adding a few little teeth in here. He looks really angry. He usually doesn't look this, this angry, but today he looks really angry. He's usually my fun dinosaur. Now, if I give him a little bit of a burp up here on his head, he may not seem so angry. And it could be that I don't have these teeth in here yet. So if we add these funny little teeth, I'm gonna adjust his nostril a little bit. And I think what it is, is it's this eyebrow. I gave him a really strong eyebrow, which he, he's got a strong eyebrow. I mean, he's a T-Rex. Yes, I'm happy that you're here with me doing dinos too. Is anybody drawing along tonight? Is anybody trying to draw? Yep, they can be purple like Barney. We don't have to paint them exactly like they are in front of us. Little funny story about Barney. So tell my age. My daughter loved, loved Barney. I mean, she loved Barney. And he kind of drove me crazy. It's, you know, like, I don't know why. He was happy. He was sweet. But um, she asked me one day why I didn't like Barney. And I said, What's, it's kind of like some foods, you know? Like, you don't like every food. She got it. She was good with that. That's her answer. Now for fun in the after party, if you guys want, we can make one of the dinosaurs crazy purple. So I'm not beyond changing up the dinosaur, making him purple. I'm gonna come in here and work on this banana a little bit. Again, This goes all the way to here. And this turns all the way to here. So this banana has some foreshortening and it's bigger than you would anticipate. It's gonna come right off the page here. And again, you guys can, luckily I used this big heavy pencil so you can see the screen. It looks a little blurry. I took autofocus off. I struggled with it for quite a while. I'll keep working on the cameras. And um, every time I moved my pencil or myself, it was changing focus and it was really distracting. And I thought, I don't want you guys all seasick from my cameras. So I changed that. Now this leg is going to come in here and we're going to see part of it, but again, I drew him way big, way, way big. There's that. Now he's got a little tongue coming up in here, big old teeth, big old dinosaur. Let's see, what time is it? 618. Going along pretty well. You like the heavy pencil? I'm glad you like the heavy pencil. It's messy though, like my hand is, is getting dirty on one side and it's not very, there's, there's not a lot of room for erasing. I can erase so much, but man, it's kind of a messy, messy thing. 
All right, so again, I'm trying to figure out where these little ridges are, and I start counting. So I know there's like one, two, three in here. So we'll just, and here's the thing. Very rarely will someone see, but no matter what you're painting. If you have a reference, if you're painting outdoors, if you're um, painting in the studio with a reference, very rarely will somebody have a comparison. So you can make it up. You don't feel like you have to do exactly the same thing. You can make changes. If you make an error, it's not the end of the world. Just be kind to yourself. All right, here's that. We're gonna do some teeth. So my point is, is I'm not gonna agonize too much about how many ridges he has on the top of his head, as long as I generally get the idea of these ridges. So I'm gonna come down here. They get smaller as they go towards his little nose till they disappear. They're a little stubbier on the back of his neck. I have no idea if this was just an artist interpretation, if these little ridges on the dinosaur were bony ridges. And so this guy's version had bony ridges. Like maybe they found a dinosaur fossil and it had big bony ridges, almost like a, a triceratops, where they have some, some bony ridges going on. Now my banana seems a little weird back in the back here. So that made me feel better. And I'm not going to worry about the board line right here, because there's no point. I'll, I'll mess with color and line and everything that's that's going on with that as I paint. I'll make some interesting marks and I'll change it. I'll start with a darker bottom and then cool the blue up on top. So when we start painting, I'll start messing with that. Go West, are you uh are you drawing along? Just hanging out and watching? She is quite a fine artist, so. Um, it's a very good chance she could be drawing along right now. Okay. So I've got a really good foundation and basis. From here, we have a lot of options. If you wanted to stick to pencil and just do a very detailed pencil drawing, you could. From, from here, you have your information and you can keep on, keep on keeping on. I can clean up some of the extra stuff I've got in my space. I usually like seeing these marks. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here. His lower jaw, right here. Just brush it with the eraser. And I'm going to see if I have a dry paintbrush. If I touch this, there's so much pencil lead on here. If I run my hand across this, I will completely make a um, mess with all this stuff. Come in here, the fresh pencil lead. He's got a little bit of detail in here. I always like to put these shoulder marks right in here 
And then you can see some ribs right over here on this edge, which is kind of fun and wrinkly, wrinkly marks in his neck. He's got some wrinkles going on. Again, cleaning up some lines. Where I got a little crazy. Dry paintbrush, just a dry paintbrush. Little tip, if you noticed, I started with a bigger piece of paper than what I'm actually drawing on. And it's inched its way back again. Um, to figure out how to stabilize that so I don't bump it at all. So this is something that you may just want to fill your whole sheet. I like it to do it this way because then if I end up that I need to adjust it, I can move my lines and draw, you know, my dinosaur further out this way or further out this way and then crop it in a different part of the page. Um, for whatever reason, it also helps me really bring it in. When you frame, you usually lose about a quarter of an inch anyway. So I know that I'm gonna lose a good quarter of an inch all the way around. His head's a little close, but it should be fine. Um, So just some little things. I can do a little bit of shading if I want. And you can shade this whole dinosaur. We're gonna do a little bit of shading and we'll have this under the color then. What do you guys think, purple? Should we make one of these purple after Barney the dinosaur when we get the colors out? We'll get a little crazy. I'm gonna put the shadows under here in his arms. So he's got some shadow underneath and his little three digit fingers, actually two, I think he only has two. This guy just has nubs over here, poor dino. They didn't give him very much detail, just little dino nubs. I'm gonna come in here. Do a little bit of dark stuff on here. And then I'm under here, like that's in between the arm and the bottom of the chest. So I see a shadow. If I see a shadow, I'm gonna start just drawing a light pencil and drawing those shadows in so that I can start to build form and turn form. So this needs a little more light up on top. But behind this jaw, it's very dark. So I'm just gonna bring a little pencil in here. And I'm just going back and forth lightly with the pencil so that it turns it a little bit and it shows a little bit of the shadow where things are, are sitting. I know that when I'm looking at these ridges on top of his head, they're pretty dark. So I'm going in here and I'm filling them in with the pencil. And we're gonna take this, I will continue with pencil for another 15 or 20 minutes. Um, let's see. I can't do a purple dinosaur, so we may end up doing an orange dinosaur, according to Mid Lebowski. So from here, he's got this, this really deep, dark ridge line around the underside of his eye and around the eye. So I'm gonna come in here, I lighten it up a little bit, and then again, where it's darker, I really press down hard and put a lot more pencil down where that black is. I don't know how well the watercolors will go over this, but we're gonna try it. And like I said, I'm just gonna work with, oh, how did I do that? 
I just poured black paint all over myself. So when you set your praying watercolors in the water bowl and knock them over and the black spills, when you pull it out, you've got black paint on everything. I mean, it is on. I have a mess, guys. Let's let's just say I've got I've got a big mess. This that was a that was a monster of a mess. That was a dinosaur monster of a mess. Okay, I'm gonna come back to here. Distracted. Wowzer. I mean, it's on me. It's on the chair. It's all over the floor. It's all through the paint thing. Uh -uh. <laughs> Don't try this at home. No dinosaurs were injured in the making of my mess. My wooden floors may be permanently died. Rookie move. Yes, yikes. The yellow dinos, because they ate too many bananas, put a purple tongue. That's fun. I love that. Yes, we're going to do that. So we're going to do yellow dinos with purple tongues. So I've got to leave enough indicator to show purple tongues. Because, of course, they ate the bananas. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, I'm gonna come up here. I forgot all about these fantastic little patterns on this dinosaur's back. Now, if you're drawing this, feel free to make up your own pattern. It doesn't have to match exactly. Just super fun. Come in here, make these little marks, and then I'm just gonna lightly draw and fill it in, in the patterns. I'm going to keep going up here on his uh, ridges, the little ridges that he has in the back of his head, too. I'll fill more of those in. He kind of looks like a punk rock dino to me. Like, maybe it looks like a, uh, oh, what do they call that? Put it on top of your head and all your hair straight up. Mohawk. It looks like a mohawk on top of his head. Okay. Work back here on his, his back leg. Some shadow back here. He's got muscly legs and wrinkles. There's a couple big wrinkles right there. Wrinkles, muscly legs. He needs cleaned up in here. His Poor little turkey neck. Poor little neck. I'm gonna give him a shadow underneath this little arm that he's got. It's got kind of a shadow down the middle because he's showing off his, his little T-Rex bicep. He's got a little T-Rex bicep going on. Super cute, super, super cute. To the middle of his eye. And again, we've got this ridge line down here. Now, I went a little too dark on top, so I'm gonna brush that off. Right there. And you see how much I picked up there and it just kind of rolled into the background. This is a very dark 6B pencil, so if you're using just a school pencil, a 2B would be great. You won't have as much of a, a mess like I have on here. Okay, let's try a giveaway. I think we ought to do a giveaway. It's 6.33. Let's do a giveaway. It's the first broadcast. Okay, so this is what we're going to do since... I'm not sure how to use all of this, this stuff. Okay. Um, drop me an email. I've got five viewers. Drop me an email to 
Um, and uh, art, here's my email address, art at wendyhome.com, okay? There's the email address. Drop me a little note and say, I want a sticker. If you know me, um, I'll bring you the sticker in person. And you're, you guys are getting dinosaur stickers tonight. So dinosaur stickers. Um, so email me and say, I want a sticker. Uh, if you don't, like if I don't know you um, and you're not somebody who's going to run into me in real life, Send me your mailing address and I'll drop it in snail mail. And it's going to be a surprise. There's, look, I've got Stegosaurus. Isn't he fun? He's so cute. So drop me an email. And then I will send you a dinosaur sticker. Leva, I'm so glad you made it. Hi. Welcome. Yes, you'll get a bonus. Sent. Yay. All right. So I did put my email address in chat in case you guys are looking for that. And then I will get those stickers out this week. So I sure appreciate you all hanging in there and watching. I don't know if this is entertaining. Hopefully you're learning something. If, if you, um, some of you, like I know Go West Art makes some beautiful art. So I'm not sure how much I can possibly teach her because she's very good. But for those of you out there drawing along, I hope that um, you learned something fun or just a little tip that'll help you along the way. Okay, I'm giving him wrinkles on his, his nose. I think that's the funnest thing. I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow in here too. We'll be adding color with the watercolor, so. Trust me, there's a lot of color on my floor right now. I will clean that up after the broadcast. So he's looking pretty good. He's got some nice dark wrinkles back here. If you all are watching with a Twitch account, um, if you've subscribed, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please just click that subscribe. That would be great. Hopefully you'll get notifications, but I do plan to be on every Friday. All right, a little more darkness on this muscle right here. And his poor little hands, they're just so, I don't know, they're not, they're more like little paws. He's got little, little paws. Carolyn, welcome. In case you missed it, Carolyn, we're going to start painting these shortly. And we're going to, because they, they ate the banana. Um, and Zoe, if you're watching, uh, my friend Zoe, uh, my, my friend Jess and her daughter Zoe, shout out to Zoe for the uh, song on YouTube from a Eurovision from years past, where it's give the wolf a banana. So if you all have never seen that you should do a little search for give the woof a banana give the woof I can't believe I'm singing um, pretty funny for those those funny moments okay just adding a little more shading in here on the back of this guy and his his jaw is pretty blank right here. I kind of neglected the whole thing. So I'm going to come in here and put this shadow under. 
And now I'm going to do a little more drawing on there. His hands look pretty good. The banana needs some brown spots. I let this sit all week. Um, I bought four, for those of you who know my little last banana story, I bought four bananas. And I said to my husband, I said, you have to leave me one banana. And of course, what did he say? He said, I'm not eating any of the bananas. And that is pretty much due to my last banana story where I caused terror for my poor son who just wanted a banana. I ate the other three bananas, by the way. All right, right in here. And now we're gonna do, I'm just gonna do a quick little pattern. I'm not gonna do every little note in this area. There are almost like little fish scallops in each one in his circle, his oval snout area. So I just kind of need to show that there's some kind of pattern inside that. This guy has a lot less definition inside his. Right there. Looks like he has a black eye the way I did this. We'll add some gouache. We'll get the gouache out after we do watercolor. And we'll add some white back in just to brighten some things like their teeth. Because I think that they need, their teeth actually have some color. The dinosaur on the right, it's got a little tint of blue to it. And the dinosaur on the left, it has a little bit of, of yellow to it. So um, they've got a little bit of color on them. I'm throwing that, that brush around again. Clean some things up. It's less likely to smear than my hand. And this is pretty smeary just because, like I said, I used a dark, dark pencil so that you could all see what I was drawing. I'm going to move this again. And there we go. So there's that. Try to keep my head out of the frame. I'm drawing sideways. So it's a little weird. I think my angle is probably a little off. That's okay. All right, so a little more detail in here. It's a little bit of shadow above that, that highlight right there. But in us drawing some of these shadows and wrinkle lines and lines, when we add some transparent color on top from the watercolor set, hopefully it won't smear too bad and hopefully it'll help define all the shapes. We'll see, this is gonna be a test. Definitely a test. Okay, this little leg that's peeking out over here, I'm just gonna do some stuff like that. And we're gonna go ahead and break into, we're doing good on time. We have them drawn. Pretty good idea of everything on this thing. Um, little highlight right in here, so I'll race a little bit to make a highlight and a little more detail inside the pattern on the back of his back. So I'll just fill that guy in like that. I wanna define this muscle just a little bit right there. Okay, and I'm gonna clean up, poor little guy, he's got a turkey neck. He's so cute. A little bit of cleanup. Now we're going to get into my messy, messy, messy watercolors. I mean, these are, they're very messy. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Basic watercolors. It's a praying set, like I mentioned. Um, I set it in my water dish. I set that down there. 
and it fell. And so the color seeped into the container. And when I lifted and moved it, the black head, it was the, the side with the little black circle on it, which you guys can see. And so there is quite a muscle over the floor. But that's okay. We're just gonna go with it and try to get some clean water. I'm using a water bin that I bought from Timu. It's great, it's got three compartments in it. So if you like art supplies and you like to order from Timu, um, this was a great stand. It has a handle, so there is a little handle on it. It has brush holders that you can put your brushes in. And right now my big bin of water is very dirty because that's where the side with the black on it sat. I'm gonna start with yellow because it's a nice bright color and we'll see how this looks on the banana. So here we go. These are just standard student grade watercolors. So again, you don't need anything fancy, especially when you're starting out and you're just trying to make some art, just have fun. Draw to draw, have a good time. Go West Lakes, B6, soft graphite. It is, it, the harder of a pencil, like, so it goes, you know, 6B is dark, 7B is gonna be darker, 8B, and then it gets lighter as it goes up. So you go 2B, of course, is a lot lighter. And then when you get into H's, that lead is really hard. So often it'll, like dent the paper, I'll notice that I can see a dent if I erase. So it's really nice to, to use a darker, a softer B because it doesn't actually get in there. But then again, you, you have more marks that you need to erase. Okay, so I'm gonna see how this goes over this. And I am very gently just putting this color over it and then picking it up and dabbing it because I'm afraid, I'm afraid. What's that famous saying? What would you do if you weren't afraid? I'm afraid that it's going to move the pencil around. So I'm hoping that by putting this paint over, that it won't move the pencil around as much once it's dry. Hoping it'll just kind of lock it in. Yeah, I'm really surprised at how well these, I mean, they're just praying student watercolors and the colors, I made a light wash. So, you know, don't, we're, we're not there yet on adding a lot of color. We'll build it up slowly. But since these are vegetarian dinosaurs who eat bananas, we're making this all just yellow dinosaurs. It's our imaginary world. We're just going to say that these guys were born banana eaters. They grew up in a banana groove. There were so many bananas. And there was nothing else. And they didn't want to eat each other, so they ate bananas. And like, you know, flamingos, I think flamingos eat shrimp. But because they ate bananas, they turned yellow. I don't want to cover his teeth. Although if all you ate were bananas, wouldn't your teeth be pretty yellow too? We're gonna to give them purple tongue, so. Now I do still want, I love the little pink parts, so I'm still gonna give him a little um, jaw. He's inside of his jaw, I'm gonna make pink. Cause that's like way fun. So we're just gonna water down some red. 
make that a little pink right there. Probably a little too red. He's got a little bit there. We're just gonna assume he's got that same jaw thing. And now I'm gonna do this purple tongue. So we're gonna give him a purple tongue. <laughs> They're so funny. Banana dinos. Tea stains might be brown. Yes, they might be. Let's see. Little brown teeth. Oh, so gross. They almost look like they're rotten teeth. I'm not so sure about that. But we can add some. Uh, I do have a tube of white gouache laying around. For those of you who do not know what gouache is, it is like watercolor, only it's used with an opaque um, pigment in it. Almost like a chalk-like pigment that will make it opaque, and it will be more white. But it uses the same binder as watercolor, so very close to watercolor. Um, let's see, his little feet. His little feet are brown and purple. So we're just gonna come in here, start making those toes, and do a little bit of brown, just like the bananas. We're gonna do a little bit of um, some brown design on here. So you know how he has a pattern on his back? How fun is that? I just filled it in with brown. Now I am gonna use red and brown in his, this ear space right here. I'm just gonna put that in there. And I have a little bit right there. Move my camera back up, the ever sliding camera. Ooh, punchy color, punchy, punchy. I'm gonna lift a little bit. Oh, and the, oh, my black is nice and soft. Let me tell you guys, you leave this watercolor sitting in the water for a long time, it is nice and juicy. I cannot believe I did that. Yes, it was very much a rookie move. Brown looks like vanilla out of the bottle. Scratch and sniff dinos. Blah! Well, they, these guys would smell like bananas, right? If they're scratch and sniff dinos, they're going to smell like bananas. Ah -ah! So gross. So very gross. Banana and vanilla. Mm, there you go. Here, I'll add a few little, let's add some brown spots on this. Banana. This is what's fun about art, guys, is it doesn't have to be a certain way. You can have fun with it. You can give your dinosaurs crazy purple tongues. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and mix a little bit of brown with it. So I just put that on my palette and I mixed, I put a puddle of yellow down and then I put a little tiny bit of brown in there. Banana sunscreen for the, oh, vacation! Vacation smell, yes, banana sunscreen. So maybe these guys do smell like banana sunscreen. Anyway, I mixed the yellow with a tiny little bit of brown. So it's almost like a golden color, and that helps add some more dimension to this guy so he's not so flat. And I'm just going up and slowly adding to his spikes up here on top. I'm 
in there. Bananas. And he's got these great wrinkles right in here, right? I mean, and I really love underneath where that pattern is. We're gonna leave it yellow. And I'm kind of mixing up to his, his spikes on the back. Because I think that would just really be fun. Now his eyeball, and I don't know if I can pull it off without doing a layer to brighten it up because there's so much color in there. I'm going to take yellow and a tiny bit of orange. I mean like tiny bit of orange. Because it's an orange. His eyeball in here is actually orange with black in between. So we're just going to put that in there and let that sit. And we'll come back to that. I keep coming back to the, the brown marks on the banana. And gang, feel free at any point. Do not feel like you need to stay. It's 6.55. I, I did say that I would, um, it is, it's a one hour show. We're almost through this. There's quite a bit of detail, but I will continue to paint for the next hour live streaming. You can stay with me and join. Um, you can go do housework. You know, you're all just dying to do Friday night housework or, uh, that time doesn't sound as fun as painting banana dinosaurs. I, I don't know. Maybe that's me. Ooh, purple shadows on the ground. I like that. That's a great idea. Great, great, great idea. See how much I can move the color to lift some of it. So I add a little bit of water to lift some of it. Yes, dinos are greater than housework. I don't think my mom would agree with that. But I I totally agree with that. Yay, dinos. Housework not as fun, especially on a Friday night. We just heard a noise in the house. It could be my cat. She'll be pretty tolerant to about nine o'clock and then she'll get really mad why why aren't you in bed okay on up on these i like leaving a little bit along the top All right, and then his crazy nostril right in there. He's also got this fabulous dent right there. I'm add a little more yellow and brown together. I'm do some work down here. And add this in this banana. Sometimes I'll jump around just so that I can give a section of time to dry. It really helps. It keeps me interested in the whole thing too. I so badly would love to just like Finish a section and move to the next, but um, I, I just don't work like that.
this nice little beat going right there. A shadow under here. Around to his mouth. Let's see what we got going on here. We've got a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange. Add a little bit of orange to the top of his face because I think that's pretty as all get out. So we're just going to add some orange in here. Highlight a little bit. He doesn't look too bad. He's kind of fun. Add a little bit to that, give him a little life in that face. Do a little more of a, try not to get brown all through my yellow, because then my yellow will be brown forever. Um, these watercolors are really fun, by the way. I think I bought them for two bucks on Amazon. I went to find them at stores and I couldn't find them. I went, uh, they, they all have like their house brand now. I was really surprised. It's been a long time since I've bought watercolor in school supplies. So, I went online and I found them. I had to order probably too much information for you all. But um the or yeah, the or I like the orange a lot. It's nice, right? The orange really did pop in there. We should add some more on this guy over here. Like maybe make him more orange than than yellow. Like instead of less brown, more orange on this guy. Because that'll be really fun to add the orange in. So kind of replacing with the oranges. Anyway, my cat has a water fountain. She loves drinking from the sinks. And so I got her a water fountain. She loves her water fountain. Except for the other night in the middle of the night. I don't know what kind of wild things she thought she was. But she knocked the water fountain over. Made a huge mess. Water everywhere. And then the pump burned out. So she's been a little upset about her water fountain nut. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to see if the dollar stores, I didn't make it to a dollar store, so it's a good point. Maybe they do. Um, but I just thought it was fun to, to paint with something different that is unexpected. Um, and a little more accessible, <laughs> except it wasn't. <laughs> Thought it would be. Anyway, so I ordered the cat a new pump. And when I ordered the pump, I thought, let's see if they have prime watercolors. And they did. Yeah, I think he's got like a little bit of pink in here. I think I'm going to do like a pinky orange. Right up in here and right there. And back here where his ear is. That's just kind of fun. That pinky orange. Bring a little more purple. Now, his teeth will show more. Take a little purple and a lot of black. I tried to do a little black, but it didn't happen. Um, and I draw some of these shadow areas back here. In between his teeth, his teeth will suddenly pop. So I'm just going in between, kind of like flossing dinosaur teeth. 
and they'll pop a little bit. Have a little more in here. Resolve that eye area. Now he's really angry. He's an angry dinosaur. I'm working on the shadow area back here. A little deeper shadow and under his neck. That's probably too much, so I'm going to thin it out. Camera back up. Fish. He's looking pretty good. Not, not too bad. You know what? I don't know. I don't know how much art kids are getting in school these days. Um, I know that they they really work hard in making sure that they've got STEM and you know that basic life stuff is so important. But sadly, I don't know that kids are getting art like we got art growing up. You know, art was we always had it. We had it in elementary, and we had it. Like, I don't think it was every other semester or an elective. Like, we just had art. And it really fosters creativity and um, expression. There's just so much to it. I know it's it's just hard. It's hard. The schools are having a hard time. Kids are having a hard time. It's a tough world. Now he's got like a nice, nice deck line right above his little teeth. I'm going to go under here and really give a nice dark shadow line on that neck and in here. And like the other dino, I'm going to go in and just do a little bit of deep, dark outlines in his mouth to help show where those teeth are. He's got like a little nugget of a tooth right in here, another one right there. up here. So I don't have to outline each one of them, but it goes a long way to outline some of them. And this banana has a little bit of black on here. And right at the base, right there. Right in there. Now, it's not quite as dark in real life as it looks on the screen. So my, my colors are a little off on screen. Not, not too bad, though. I mean, they're not off that much. Go in here and add more orange in here. And maybe even a little orange brown. Right up in here. Just that definition in his mouth and in, in between his teeth. Of course, he's got brown in there because he's a banana eater. I probably should go over their tongues. I can see that purple really well, though. Like, it may not show on the screen well, well, but in person, the purple looks really good. Okay, 
some brown and yellow. Get a little bit of stuff on his neck. Right in there. Right up in here. In the back of his head, he's got some great shadows um, and, and all the way to his, his little bumpy lines. I think I need to add like yellow orange up on top. And maybe a little bit of yellow orange in here. That's a lot of yellow orange, but I like it. It's fun. Maybe we'll add a touch of that yellow, that orange um, over the yellow here and down in here. And then go back to his brown, a little bit more brown on his arms for variation. Right, all right. Now this needs a little bit of work. His face is a little, or his upper jawline, I kind of just ignored it. Didn't do a good job of it. That's a little better. And I think he needs a little more brownish black, we'll say. Did I just bump this? I probably did, but I think it's okay. So a little more in here. Just adding some little dots throughout of some color. So this is a very limited palette, meaning there are only eight colors in the palette. I have yet to use green, which is hilarious considering we're painting dinosaurs. Um, so I have not used any green. I've only used, and I haven't used any blue. I used purple, red, orange, and yellow, but blue and green did not use. Funny enough. All right, let's add some fun detail in here. Maybe even in here and there. And on that. Cover that because it's bright back there, but nowhere else. And I think he's, oh, his back needs a little bit. He's got it's a little doll back here. So we're going to add just a little bit of orange yellow just to zip him up. Do a little bit of color in here, a little more color than normal. A little bit under his neck, too. Just do it like one of those crazy lizards that are colored underneath their bellies real well. Maybe add a little bit of that orange in here also. I think that it's just a nice little touch. And now we're going to play with a background. 713. Good timing. So I'm going to bring black with a lot of purple. And I really want to look at where am I? Got a big nice shadow right here. Oh, and I should probably do his toes with this because this is my dark, 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 right in here. Um, we can probably even do the inside of his leg. Dark, dark, and that. 
And from there, we're gonna water this down now. So I wanna make a puddle, but I don't want it near as dark as what I had already. And it has a purple tone to it. So I have a little bit of black and I have some purple in there. And I'm just gonna go around everything right here. And I'm just gonna let it drip down. So there we've got my shadows stuck. Still looks really good. I'm using a bigger brush. Adding a little bit of black to my puddle and more water so that I have about the same consistency. And I go right up to his body. around his, his little dinosaur arms. The solar system with watercolor, like did you paint the styrofoam with watercolor or did you, or did you do a painting of the solar system in school with watercolor? Behind the teeth, I have a little bit of brown on the teeth. I have purple where the tongue is and I need to add a little more purple. Um, I'm now gonna add blue to that purple and water it down a little bit and do almost like a transition in here to this top area. I probably should have worked from the top to the bottom. I didn't. I was pretty excited about running that purple in there. My water is really dirty, guys, too. So just so you know, dirty, dirty water. All right, let that just drip down. All right. Now, when I go in over that, I've got to be careful not to lift that black up. So I'm just going to pop it in and then escape as quickly as possible. I'm also going to try to scoop some of it as I go down here because it runs into that black and then it dissolves the black. I can see it kind of dissolving right here, which is fine. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Go in there. Sometimes I like to leave some of these fun scratchy marks or a little bit of white showing through which is nice this guy over here is looking rough on the right he just looks a little unfinished Boy, I really have sorry gang hold on I'm gonna have to really lock this in next week. It's 
So I'm picking some of this stuff up here around that banana pill and softly rubbing it. And now I'm gonna put another layer down below. So a little darker. I like the blue, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that blue in there because I think that's really kind of fun. So I mixed a tiny touch of black with purple and blue for this color that I have down below. I'll just go over everything. My paper is very wet. It's warbly. It's warbly, it's back and forth. Now, like, if you see, I kind of like those little marks like that. So I'm going to do a little more of that and leave them and see if some of them will, will probably work themselves out. But I really like that right there. Okay. And now, I think... Okay, that's gonna drive me crazy. I have a little bit of, I need like a little tiny wash of bluey purple right in here. And not too much, cause it's gonna drain weird. So like that. Now this picked up and then bloomed into here, but I think it's okay. We're just gonna say he has a party hat on. That dinosaur is partying. He's having a good time. I'm gonna smooth out some of this. It's a little crazy over here. And I just take the brush and I scrub it a little bit. So I've lifted and scrubbed. Smooth it out a little bit. And I want this Looking on the camera, I think this is a little, it's not soft enough. So I'm going to add a little pink in there, because why not? We're just going to give them like pink cheeks. I think that would be kind of fun. He's almost embarrassed for stealing that banana. It's like, I'm just stealing a banana. And I think the last thing. I'm gonna do is grab a white wash. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of this white wash with some of my yellow. Because his eyeball needs to be a little more obvious and you can't really see it. So if I go around where it's supposed to be, and then if I switch and put a dot of black in it once that dries, it'll be a lot more visible. Same with if I do the orange on the other one. He's got like a very orange Yellow orange eye. I need more, more yellow. Is it quite yellow enough? And then we're gonna add a little more black in the middle to help define that. So I just added that. A little party hat. Oh yeah. Dinosaur party hat. And I think if I do more of a line down here, 
around that nostril. Okay, let's touch those that purple tongue up a little. A little more purple tongue. Little more purple on the tongue. Right there. Right there. Not too bad for dinos. A little bit of blue on his teeth near the top. This have way too many bananas. All right. Yay! Cheers! All right, if anybody has not seen my shirt, let me show you my shirt. Wait, I'll show you my shirt. Oh yeah, E.T. with the dinosaur. Carolyn, thank you. Thank you all. Um, I'll work on getting this camera to stay in one spot. I have it all hooked up and then it just uh, comes down a little bit. Um, but thank you guys all for hanging in there and for watching. If anybody missed it, if you send me an email at art at wendyalm.com, I will give you stickers. I'll send you a sticker, um, mystery dinosaur sticker. And if I know you and see you in person, then I'll find out on the, on the email. Um, again, Every Friday, come back, subscribe, come back, watch on Friday nights. Even if you just stick it on and put it in the background, it'll help my channel. So you don't even have to sit and watch or interact if you don't want to. Um, or if you are working on your own artwork and it helps as inspiration or just other things to see and do, feel free to join in every Friday at 6. Um, I will try to go till 8. I finished early tonight. I can't believe it. But I thought I'd still be painting. And um, all of the party icons are coming up from Mid Lebowski. Thank you. Um, but that is pretty much all I've got. There's a download every week, and I have a few weeks ahead. I try to, I'll try to keep it five weeks out for an image that you can download to draw along if you want to draw along. If there's any interest and you want to send me a note and say, hey, at some point, I'd love to do a group critique. Then I'm thinking about as the channel gets more subscribers, doing a group critique, and you guys can send me your art, and then I'll share them with everybody, and we can talk about it and talk about, you know, what worked really well, what was great. I will change up materials as well, so I'm going to try just Crayola markers coming up, um, colored pencils. We'll, we'll work with colored pencils and just some different media so that. You can try some different things and have a really good time with with using supplies. So um, that's all I got. Thank you all and have an awesome, awesome night. Say bye to you all.